Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to the 2021 Trooper and TCO of the Year ceremony. Uh, it's only been six months since we've, we've been in this same building um, during COVID times. So we're trying to get back on track with having the uh, Trooper of the Year and TCO of the Year ceremony back in the early spring like we do. So welcome everyone, friends, family, and uh, co-workers here to this ceremony today. Today is a special day where we recognize our employees for a job well done. This is not the only time of the year that we do this, but this is a special time for the South Carolina Highway Patrol to recognize the men and women of this agency. A few housekeeping rules this morning. Uh, restrooms are out the double doors to your left. If you need to use the restroom, please, if you don't mind, please place your phones on silent. And at the conclusion of the ceremony, you ask all recipients uh, to please stay here for photographs. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask everyone to stand for the invocation and remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the South Carolina Highway Patrol Honor Guard. Invocation is given by Chaplain Dave Tafalia with the South Carolina Elite. Please join me as we pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us to recognize these employees who have gone above and beyond their call of duty. Father, we invite you to join us this morning. We pray that all would go well and everything that we do would be pleasing in your sight. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Post the colors.
You may have a seat. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you and call to the uh, stand to make some opening remarks the commander of the South Carolina Highway Patrol, Colonel Christopher Williamson. Thanks, Lieutenant Colonel Manley. Good morning to everyone. It's definitely a pleasure to be standing before each and every one of you this morning to honor our heroes. The uh, heard the baby laughing back there when the uh, honor guard was marching off. You know what happened? They used to pick at me when I when I was on the honor guard. But that kid saw certain. He said, "Look, Mom, it's toy soldiers." <laughs> Certain I'm not the blunt of the jokes anymore. <laughs> not from that aspect. <laughs> I would like to extend a warm welcome to our nominees, their families, and distinguished guests today as we celebrate our 2021 Troop of the Year and Telecommunications Operator of the Year, along with our special award winners here today as well. Thank you all to our friends and family members for sharing in this celebration. This is indeed a special day to recognize the heroic acts of service by our men and women, and also the steady dedication and commitment to public service. Those represented here today come from all regions of our state. This week marked the 92nd anniversary of the creation of the South Carolina Highway Patrol. As we celebrate excellence today, I want to remind you of the proud legacy of this organization and the foundation that was laid for us by those who have served in our ranks throughout our history and in particular, those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Later this month, we will hold our fallen trooper service of remembrance when we will pause to remember those 51 patrolmen and troopers and support their families who made the ultimate sacrifice. As we head into our next chapter of history, those represented here today carry on the proud legacy of selfless service, integrity, and responsibility. As public servants, we have collectively walked through a challenging season in recent years. As we take this time today to honor some of our heroes, I want to commend every person wearing this uniform and our outstanding telecommunications personnel and our civilian staff who stand beside our law enforcement each and every day. Let's give ourselves a round of applause. Thank you. Being a public servant, especially in law enforcement, demands that you rise above the politics or cultural battles of the day and always keep your eyes fixed on why you chose this profession and why you are called to serve. When I look at the stories of those we honor today, I am so thankful that each of you were the one at that place, at that time, as you saved lives, as you meticulously investigated crime scenes, as you follow your training and instincts to remind you to take one more step to look beyond the obvious. As you, our TCOs, remain calm and assisted troopers during a pursuit or a tense situation. As your colonel, it gives me tremendous pride to read these narratives and to know that this is more than a job to you. It is a commitment to help others in the most extraordinary ways as a father and grandfather, I can only imagine the gratitude that those you serve must have felt. Beyond that, your actions set an example for those around you. As others hear of the way you conducted your duty or acted with composure in a time of crisis, it gives them a roadmap and the courage to do the same. This is an exciting time, as Lieutenant Colonel Manley said. It is an exciting time at the South Carolina Department of Public Safety. It is an exciting time in our state here in South Carolina, and it is an exciting time to be a law enforcement profession. When you can make a difference in your community and your state through many of our community outreach programs or just day-to-day -day interactions, what each and every one of you do. When technology has transformed patrol cars into mobile offices, and when we are receiving unprecedented support from our state leaders. It takes all of us working together to make this organization thrive, all of us. We are not just the troop on the road or the mate unit or telecommunications. We are all one team, as Director Woods speaks oftenly. We are all one team working together for a safer South Carolina. 
So today, sit back and relax for a few minutes as we celebrate these accomplishments in our great organization. I would like to thank Lieutenant Colonel Manley, Lieutenant Colonel Abbott, for presenting these narratives here today, and I would like to thank the entire Highway Patrol Command staff, all of our troopers, civilian staff, TCOs, and everyone for what they do each and every day. As your name is called here today, and you are a recipient, and you approach the stage to receive your award, please come up the ramp to my right, which will be your left. At the end of the ceremony, the Public Affairs Unit will take photos with all recipients, as Lieutenant Colonel Manley has alluded to, uh, with their recipients, uh, the families, troop, and unit commanders, whoever wish to take pictures at the end of the ceremony. It is indeed a pleasure, as I stated earlier, to have each and, one, each and every one of you here today. Uh, can't say how much I appreciate you, the job that you do day in and day out. Thanks for everything that you do. Family members, thanks for coming to uh, join us today with your loved one. And we appreciate the opportunity that you give your loved one to not only be an employee at the South Carolina Department of Public Safety, the South Carolina Highway Patrol, but what they do to serve the citizens here in South Carolina. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce the director of the South Carolina Department of Public Safety, Director Robert G. Woods. Director Woods has been at the helm of DPS since 2020 and has spent over 33 years in South Carolina law enforcement. I am so thankful for his leadership and for consistently challenging us to find new and more effective ways of doing business and serving our state with pride and professionalism. At this time, help me join uh, Director Woods in bringing him to the podium. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, first of all, of course, I want to congratulate all the honorees for being recognized for your exceptional service. But at the same time, I, I want to extend my thanks to all members of the Highway Patrol for the services that you perform for the state of South Carolina every day. Um, as I prepared my remarks, my thoughts turned to the story of, of a woman named Therese Martine. Uh, for Catholics, she's known as St. Therese of Lisieux. Now, for French speakers, I apologize for that pronunciation, but that's as good as it's going to get, okay? Uh, and as a footnote before I start my comments, you know, it, it's, those who know me will say, well, you know, this seems about right. For those who don't know me, you're probably saying, where could he possibly be headed with this, okay? But if you just give me a few minutes, I'll explain it to you. Uh, the story of St. Therese itself is something that's not very remarkable. Uh, she was born in 1873. She suffered the tragedy of losing her mother early in life. She entered uh, the uh, uh, religious life as a Carmelite nun in, at the age of 15. She lived that life until she died of tuberculosis at the age of 24 in 1897. What does make St. Therese remarkable is how she lived her life of faith. Um, see, from her perspective, most people look at a life of great faith as reflecting those larger-than-life figures who commit or do great acts of heroism or great acts of sacrifice, which of course is true and it's very important. But for her, a great life of faith was simply doing simple things every day to help other people. That was it. For example, being kind to an older nun who she found annoying. Helping somebody with a simple task that was challenging them. So how does that then relate to us? Well, while it is important to recognize critically important to recognize and to hold up examples of acts of heroism that are done by members of the Highway Patrol. While it's important to hold up that exceptional service that goes well above and beyond the call of duty, that's extremely important. But it's also important to recognize 
the simple acts of service that are done by members of the highway patrol every single day. For example, in enforcement, arresting a drunk driver, writing a speeding ticket, writing a, uh, a seatbelt ticket. You know, these things become just commonplace for us, but we can't lose sight of the fact that just in doing those simple duties every day, we're impacting the lives of thousands of people. And keep in mind, for example, probably the simplest enforcement action that can be taken right in that seatbelt ticket is saving thousands of lives when we change that behavior because still 50% of the people who are lost on our, on our highways every year are killed because they're not wearing their seatbelt. So just that simple act of service. Of course, it goes beyond that too. A TCO who takes a call from a confused motorist who's just been involved in a collision as they calm them and get help to them. Incredibly important. Uh, a supervisor who says, hey, listen, I'll cover a shift for you as a subordinate needs to go to a family function that day. These are things that have tremendous impact on individuals every single day. Don't think that a great life of service is only reflected by great acts of heroism. While it is what you do every day to serve the people of South Carolina cannot be overlooked in terms of its greatness. Again, I wanna congratulate you for being recognized. I want to thank you for the service that you do, and I ask that God blesses you and your families. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director. This time, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, some of our guests that's here today. And just, well, they are guests, but they aren't guests, so they all, we all family. And I uh, just want to recognize them. Um, I'd like to recognize Ms. Ms. Lois Rayo and Ms. Beverly Coates, who are always stand out and support the Highway Patrol when it comes to um, the family of, of our, our fallen troopers. Let's give them a round of applause as they sit here. And Miss Allie, Miss Allie Coates, good to see you as well. I'd um, like to uh, recognize uh, Mark Gosnell, a retired major with the Highway Patrol and now the executive director of the South Carolina Troopers Association. Um, let's give him a round of applause as well. Uh, Douglas Kahn and Miss, Miss Becca, who will be here today to uh, present a special award to our overall winner um, as the Trooper of the Year. Let's give them a round of applause. You all have already met him, but everybody knows Dave Tafau and what he brings to with SC Leap and how much he means to the uh, law enforcement assistance program throughout the state of South Carolina, not just with the Highway Patrol or DPS law enforcement, but all law enforcement throughout the state helped me in um, you know, applauding him as well. <laughs> to our uh, sister divisions, uh, Matt Calhoun as the chief of BPS and uh, Colonel Dill at STP and their staff I want to thank them for supporting it and all members of the, the directors, the executive staff, uh, Chief Oliver and everyone that's here from the different divisions to support this celebration as we recognize our heroes. Thanks to all of you and we truly appreciate you. At this time, we will start our uh, awards recognition ceremony and the first awards we will uh, recognize is called our Distinguished Service Awards. Uh, you all remember in years past we had the Director's Award. Um, the Distinguished Service Awards took the place of the Director's Award. So Distinguished Service Award is an award uh, given to individuals that have done something great and heroic. And it is presented to these individuals on behalf of uh, our Director, Director Woods. The Director Woods Distinguished Service Awards, or DPS Distinguished Service Awards. We will present them at this time. The first award we go to, and please come forward as we call your name, Trooper Adam P. Piskatoski, <laughs> 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 that's it? Yeah. 
Piskatoski, okay, I got it. And you are the winner of the spelling bee. <laughs> hey, stand right here with me. We hereby express our sincere appreciation for your act of heroism and courage after what appeared to be a traffic violation became a medical emergency on January 17th in Edgefield County. After the vehicle stopped, the door swung open and a female passenger and male driver fell to the ground. The female passenger appeared completely lifeless. You called for an ambulance, administered two doses of Narcan, and performed CPR until help arrived. Your calm handling of this unexpected emergency and quick response helped save the life of the female passenger. And without those actions and your training, definitely we were called and told that this passenger probably would have, have, have died if it not for your quick action. So on this day, uh, we present you this award, uh, Director R.G. Woods, Director of the South Carolina Department of Public Safety. Thank you and congratulations. The next Distinguished Service Award goes to First Sergeant Adam Antley. Please come forward. I thought Adam grew a beard back there. Where you at, Adam? That's his twin brother. Yes. First Sergeant, you okay? Yes, I'm sorry. First Sergeant Adam L. Antley, Distinguished Service Award. We hereby express our sincere appreciation for your act of heroism and courage after you stopped at the scene of a collision and administered life-saving efforts to a motorcyclist that crossed the center line and was struck head on by a Chevrolet pickup truck on May 2nd of 2021 in Lexington County. Your handling of the unexpected emergency and quick response are a credit to the South Carolina Highway Patrol and law enforcement community of your life-saving technique, understanding you was, this was your day off you had yes, saw, seen, you witnessed the accident or drove up on it and responded and helped save the life of that motorcyclist. And today we say thank you on, on behalf of the South Carolina Highway Patrol uh, and the Department of Public Safety giving this Distinguished Service Award by Robert G. Woods, the Director of the South Carolina Department of Public Safety. Congratulations. All right, this is a triple. The following recipients, please come forward to accept their uh, Distinguished Service Award. Lieutenant Colonel Travis Manley, Trooper Kenneth Scribalito. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come forward. And Trooper Cor Corey Fulmer. Let's give them a round of applause while they come forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We hereby express our sincere appreciation for your act of heroism and courage after what appeared to be a traffic violation became a medical emergency on January the 18th in the city of Lexington. After approaching the vehicle, you observed that the driver had stopped breathing. You called for backup, gained entry into the vehicle, and worked with other troopers and officers to perform CPR until help arrived. Your quick and decisive action set a positive example for the troopers and officers who arrived on scene and was a credit to the public safety community. And what I just read was what exactly happened with Lieutenant Colonel Manley. Um, on this morning, he was headed to work. He ran up on, on to a vehicle that had stopped, didn't know what type of issues the guy was having, 
when he, Lieutenant Colonel Manley approached the vehicle, the driver had stopped breathing at the time. He called for assistance. These two troopers came to assist him, and they assisted in um, getting the, the gentleman from the vehicle, notifying EMS. Gentleman got transported to the hospital, and as a result of it, we received a call from Lexington Hospital letting us know that the actions of our troopers is what actually saved this guy. So y'all join me in congratulating them, and we truly appreciate what they have done on behalf of the South Carolina Highway Patrol. Thank you to the Distinguished Service Award recipients. Thank you for a job well done. Thank you for representing South Carolina Department of Public Safety and specifically the South Carolina Highway Patrol Division in a heroic and safety manner. This time we'll have a uh, presentation of the, our Purple Heart Award. Purple Heart Award is given to a law enforcement officer, a trooper with the Highway Patrol um, that is involved in an, an heroic act, an act of courage where they are injured in the line of duty. Uh, you know, throughout our career, hopefully we don't have anybody that ever fall in this category, but unfortunately we do. Uh, at this time, uh, and I'll ask the captain of Troop 5, Captain Calder, to come forward uh, this trooper who was involved in the incident has been out since this incident occurred and was not able to, able to make it today. So I asked his captain to come forward and accept it on his behalf. South Carolina Department of Public Safety, the Purple Heart Award presented to Master Trooper Whitney Blake Benton. With sincere appreciation for uncommon courage and fortitude following a struggle with a suspect which resulted in serious injuries, on September the 11th of 2021, after an attempted traffic stop in which the suspect fled. A saying, a man does what he must in spite of personal consequences, in spite of obstacles and dangers and pressures, and that is the basis of all human morality. That was said by President John Fitzgerald. I want to present this award to uh, Master Trooper Benton, but to his captain in his absence on this day April 8th, 2022, for a job well done. Thank you to our Purple Heart recipient. At this time, I would like to call members of the Office of Highway Safety and Justice Program to the podium to uh, present awards to our Target Zero Challenge Awards at this time. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Colonel, for allowing us to be here. 
I'm Greg Riggs. I'm the Law Enforcement Support Services Manager. I help oversee the South Carolina Law Enforcement Networks out of the Office of Highway Safety and Justice Programs. Unfortunately, again, this year we did not get to have our Target Zero Awards that we normally recognize officers and agencies and troopers and troops for their outstanding enforcement, education, and prevention of DUI uh, type related offenses. Uh, we have two types of awards that we're going to do today, one being the Troop of the Year, the other being the Trooper of the Year. And before I make those announcements, I'll just tell you a little history on it of how we do this. Each year, the tro uh, Troop Commander has the opportunity to nominate their troop and also a specific trooper for their efforts that they've done throughout that year, and this year being 2021 that we're awarding. This year, we did something a little different. We had an outside panel outside of South Carolina of law enforcement officials that we deal with through our networks and they were the ones that made the selection of who these winners were. Heard a lot of great, great <clears throat> remarks and a lot of good feedback of what South Carolina Highway Patrol was doing when it came to uh, preventing DUIs and the efforts that was given uh, to be able to make sure that that didn't happen again. So the first award that we have today is the uh, South Carolina Highway Patrol Troop of the Year. Uh, in the Target Zero Awards, and that's going to be Troop 5. So if I can get a representative from Troop 5, Captain Calder, please. <laughs> and this award reads, the South Carolina Department of Public Safety presents the South Carolina Highway Patrol Troop of the Year Award to Troop 5 for excelling in the areas of DUI arrests, DUI victim services, and anti-underage drinking programs in South Carolina during 2001. As I said, we have two awards, and the next award is actually for the Trooper of the Year whenever the Target Zero Awards are awarded. Not the Trooper of the Year for the Highway Patrol, but Trooper of the Year for the Target Zero Awards. And that will be to Trooper William Baker for Troop One. This award reads, South Carolina Department of Public Safety presents South Carolina Highway Patrol Trooper of the Year Award to Trooper William Baker, Troop 1, for excelling in the areas of DUI arrests, DUI victim services, and anti-underage anti drinking programs in South Carolina during 2001. The group we're about to recognize is very special to me because my late mother was a retired 911 operator. They are our literal lifeline and we appreciate all they do behind the scenes. National Public Safety Communications Week is April 10th through the 16th, so I would like to wish them a happy week in advance. At this time, I will recognize the winners of the TCO of the year for each of our four centers and Colonel Williamson will name the overall winner. From the Blythewood Telecommunications Center, TCO Tarn D. Kynard. Come forward. <laughs> TCO Kynard has been with the Blythewood Telecommunications Center since November the 2nd, 2018. TCO Kynard is a hard worker, and in addition to becoming one of Blythewood's most dependable TCOs, is one of the most polite people you will ever meet. TCO Kynard is always smiling or laughing with his fellow TCOs and is courteous, not just to his co-workers, 
and troopers, but also to the public and other agencies he deals with daily on the telephone. TCO Connor has recently started training new TCOs in the Blackwood Telecommunications Center. He has done a great job so far with this new task. He is very patient and helpful to all new employees with their questions. TCO Torrin Connor is also one of Blackwood's Datamax users and on more than one occasion has been willing to adjust his schedule to help out another shift with coverage for the Datamax. TCO Connor has also switched shifts with several TCOs to help them take off work on certain days. TCO Connor is someone that all new TCOs and veterans should strive to be like. TCO Connor, please come forward. From the Charleston TCC, we have dual winners, TCO Chesley Cribb and Jessica Weibaugh. <laughs> the Charleston TCC nominates for TCO of the Year are TCO Chelsea Cribb and TCO Jessica Weibaugh. TCOs Cribb and Weibaugh were recognized as our employees of the quarter for the third quarter for the handling of an incident in August of 2021. On August the 31st, near the beginning of their shifts, TCO Weibaugh answered a phone call about a stolen vehicle. OnStar was reporting the vehicle was stolen and that they were tracking the vehicle. TCO Weibaugh took the information and entered the call while also alerting her units of the information. TCA Weibaugh stayed on the phone with OnStar updating locations as they became available. TCA Weibaugh verified the vehicle information that the vehicle had not been entered in the NCIC as the report had just been taken. She obtained the officer's name, agency, and contact information regarding the stolen vehicle. TCO Crib alerted her units to the call and provided them with vehicle information as they were quickly passing through Troop 6 into Troop 7. TCO Weibaugh continued to gather information from OnStar and TCO Crib updated her units as information was available. The vehicle stopped at a gas station in Orangeburg County just off of Interstate 26. TCO Crib notified Orangeburg County for backup assistance for the units she had en route to that area. As a trooper approached the area, a subject fled, leading to a foot pursuit. While TCO Crib was handling the foot pursuit, TCO Weibaugh received a call from the reporting officer that a second vehicle was also involved in stolen. Units on scene were able to locate the second vehicle and confirm that it was showing as stolen. A citizen approached units on scene, advising his truck had also been stolen that morning. Unfortunately, the subject fled and the truck was not located. Due to the efficient and thorough work of TCO Weibaugh and TCO Crib, troopers were able to recover two separate stolen vehicles and detain several passengers. With incidents such as these, it is very easy for a call to have unfavorable outcomes. Thanks to the professionalism of these TCOs, the situation ended safely for the road units and the public as a whole. TCO Crib and TCO Weibaugh, please come forward. From the Florence Telecommunications Center, ATCS Carl F. DeVault. ATCS Carl F. DeVault began his career with the department on August 2, 2007. He was promoted to the position of Assistant Telecommunications Supervisor in November 2012. 
He performs his duties in a professional manner, making every effort to multitask by promptly answering the telephones and entering calls for service into the CAD system. He is very knowledgeable in, of the CAD system and maintains proper documentation in the CAD notes. He ensures officer safety by properly documenting traffic stops and updating the status of the troopers on his shift. ATCS DeVault guides his subordinates to the proper resources whenever help is needed and responds promptly to his subordinates when answering questions that they may have. He completed training of a new employee in 2021. All training documents were in order. He frequently volunteers to cover shift shortages by volunteering to work extra days. He has volunteered to work extra shifts even during periods when he is scheduled for leave. ATCS DeVault has a devotion to law enforcement. He volunteers on his days off as a reserve deputy with the Florence County Sheriff's Office. ATCS DeVault, please come forward. Congratulations. From the Greenville Telecommunications Center, TCO April Smith. TCO April Smith has been with the Greenville Telecommunications Center since January 2015. Prior to joining the South Carolina Highway Patrol, TCO Smith worked for the Pickens County Sheriff's Office and often uses the knowledge she gained there to assist other TCOs who are not as familiar with Pickens County. TCO Smith is a team player who helps other TCOs in the office when they are busy by pulling phone calls, updating information in the CAD system, and filling out tow logs. She also assists with staffing in the office by volunteering to come in and work extra on days that would normally be her day off. TCO Smith helps to maintain a pleasant working environment in the office by assisting other TCOs and showing appreciation when she receives assistance from someone else. She maintains a calm demeanor at all times while in the TCC, whether she is talking on the phone with a subject who is upset talking on the radio with an officer who is involved in a pursuit, or talking with other TCOs in the office. TCO Smith has been on the radio during several pursuits in 2021 and has maintained her calm demeanor through each of them while using her attention to detail to ensure all information is in the notes of the call and that she is relaying all of the information to other agencies for assistance. She specifically handled a chase on January the 3rd, 2021 that really showed her attention to detail and her ability to remain calm. Although this chase only lasted five minutes, TCO Smith stayed calm and entered 17 notes in the call to provide the details of everything that occurred during that time. TCO Smith is unable to be with us today, so Captain Dixon, please come forward. Drum roll. Now to announce the overall winner for TCO of the Year for the South Carolina Highway Patrol uh, 2021. It would be the co-winners out of Charleston, Walbeck and Crib. Please give them a round of applause. Please come forward.
remember the name as I walked out because I was going to walk out with one, but if I walked out with both, y'all couldn't. <laughs> so that's what I was trying to figure out. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, ladies. Truly appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for recognizing our TCOs of the year and to the, again, congratulations to the uh, winners out of the Goose Creek uh, Troop 6 uh, Charleston area. As a result of the overall winners, the director has always uh, has already approved a $500 bonus for each one of you that would be in your next paycheck. Thank you. I think they thought that was a joke, Colonel. No, <laughs> okay, at this time we're going to be uh, going through the Troop of the Year for, I'll be covering Troops 1 through 7, then Lieutenant Colonel Albert will cover the ESA units. Uh, troop 1, Troop of the Year, it's going to be Trooper T.A. Johnson, Troop 1 Post B, come forward. Trooper Johnson. Trooper Johnson has been a true asset to the South Carolina Highway Patrol since he graduated patrol school in 2020. It was never more apparent than it was in 2021. Last year, Trooper Johnson displayed skills that you would normally see in seasoned troopers. He is very proactive in drug and DUI enforcement. He keeps his shifts mates encouraged, often calling upon them to participate in different events as in LIDAR or area coordinated enforcement. Not only did Trooper Johnson volunteer on the uh, USC football detail, but also the CERT team, but he volunteers for any day that there is a shortage within his post. With any enforcement campaign, he's always willing to step up with a response, put me where you need me. With that attitude, he's a positive impact on those around him in his post. It was also during 2021 that Trooper Johnson showed attentiveness and willingness with the collision investigation skills. He had responded to several high profile collisions, including a felony DUI with great bodily injury to a child. It was during that incident that Trooper Johnson determined that the suspect had just left a nearby store. He was able to go to that store and obtain video footage of the suspect in the store that displayed her grossly intoxicated. The video then showed her leaving the parking lot with the child inside the vehicle. That piece of evidence will be crucial in the prosecution of this case. He also responded to a hit and run that happened on I-20 in his post. While en route, he called the victim to get the description of the vehicle that had fled the scene. After doing so, he was able to locate the vehicle while traveling to the, through the city of Camden and conducted a traffic stop. After interviewing the driver, he determined that the driver in the vehicle was a vehicle that fled the scene and resulted in an arrest. Please uh, join me in congratulating Trooper Johnson. Troop 2, Trooper of the Year is Trooper R.G. Rob Chase. It'll be Troop 2, Post A. Come forward, please. <laughs> Lance Corporal R.G. Rob Chase joined the South Carolina Highway Patrol in 2018. He's a certified field training officer and standardized field sobriety test instructor. Rob also maintains a certification as a specific skills instructor with the South Carolina Criminal Justice Academy. Lance Corporal Chase 
was just an hour into his shift on July 6, 2021, when he observed an SUV traveling over 30 miles an hour above the posted speed limit on SC 219 in Newberry County. He initiated the traffic stop on the vehicle. As he approached the SUV, the male, a male subject abruptly exited the vehicle, screaming that his baby was dying in the back seat. Lance Corporal Chase opened the back door and noticed a toddler in obvious medical distress. Lance Corporal Chase asked the young mother if the child was breathing, but due to the mother's emotional state and language barrier, Lance Corporal Chase was unable to immediately determine if the child was conscious or even alive. He instructed the mother to place the child flat on his back in the back seat and requested an ambulance. Lance Corporal Chase, Lance Corporal Chase checked for any signs of breathing and a pulse, but could not find either. He immediately began two finger chest compressions. Lance Corporal Chase noticed that the child's skin was hot to the touch. While monitoring the child's respirations and pulse, he asked the mother about the toddler's health. He said the young baby had just been battling a fever and had recently been given fever reducing medications and a cool bath just before becoming unresponsive. When Lance Corporal Chase asked how much medication was administered, the mother seemed confused regarding the dosage amount. Although both parents were emotionally distraught, Lance Corporal Chase comforted them by reassuring them the child had a strong pulse and was steady respiration. EMS arrived moments later and Lance Corporal Chase relayed all the known information about the child's condition to EMTs before transporting the child to the hospital. Later in the evening, Lance Corporal Chase learned that the child survived and would also be released from the hospital. Lance Corporal Chase said that from his first aid and CPR training he had just received at the South Carolina Highway Patrol a few months earlier was fresh in his mind and he was providing assistance to the child. As the events of this stressful incident unfolded, Lance Corporal Chase remained calm and professional. Even though he was faced with a severely ill child and desperate high emotional parents, he utilized his training and excellent communication skills to secure a successful outcome. Please join me in congratulating Lance Corporal Chase. Troop 3 uh, Trooper of the Year will be Lance Corporal J.M. Gardner. Troop 3 Postie, uh, please come forward. <laughs> On May 16th, 2021, at approximately 6.47 p.m., communications advised of a possible impaired driver traveling west on I-26 in Spartanburg County. Lance Paul Corporal Gardner was on the, at the Postie office performing paperwork but immediately dropped everything to respond to the call for service. Before Lance Corporal Gardner could locate the vehicle, it crashed into the medium bear on the interstate. Lance Corporal Gardner arrived on the scene shortly afterwards and was informed by Good Samaritan, Mr. Poston, that the driver was unresponsive and having a seizure. Mr. Poston had already broken out the passenger side window to gain access to the vehicle. Lance Corporal Gardner and Mr. Poston removed the unresponsive driver and placed him on the ground. The driver was turning blue and not breathing and had no pulse. Lance Corporal Gardner notified communications to have EMS en route and he began CPR on the driver. While removing the driver from the vehicle, Lance Corporal Gardner cut his left palm with a piece of glass in the vehicle. Lance Corporal Gardner continued giving chest compressions with the help of the bystander until the fire department and medics arrived on the scene. A faint pulse was found by the medics from the fire department and EMS. The driver was given Narcan on four separate occasions by EMS and medics from the department. After the fourth dose of Narcan, he started responding to the treatments. EMS treated, the, treated Lance Corporal Gardner's hand in an attempt to stop the bleeding and advised he also needed to seek medical attention. Lance Corporal Gardner was transported to Spartanburg Regional Hospital via patrol vehicle due to his injury, required stitches to close the laceration. Without these life-saving efforts performed by Lance Corporal Gardner on the driver, he most likely would not have survived. Please join me in congratulating Lance Corporal Gardner.
Troop 4, uh, Trooper of the Year will be Lance Corporal D.A. Bunch, Troop 4, Post B. Please come forward. Lance Corporal D.A. Bunch began his law enforcement career in May of 2001 and came to the South Carolina Highway Patrol in January of 2019. On August 6, 2021, Florence Telecommunications Center gave out a bolo in regards to a kidnapping that occurred in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. The, victim, the victim's phone was pinging to the area around Carowinds Boulevard in York County. Florence TCC advised the victim was possibly in a white Mercedes C250. Lance Corporal Bunch immediately responded to the area and began looking for this vehicle. Lance Corporal Bunch then received an update that the phone was pinging in the 3000 block of SC51. He responded to the area and while searching the business parking lot, located the white Mercedes. Lance Corporal Bunch approached the vehicle and located the female crouched down in the driver's seat. He began checking on the welfare of the female and advised, and advised that Lance Corporal Bunch then showed followed down the dead end in the road and, and, and was cornered. I apologize. She then stated that the, that the armed man that had placed her there got out of the vehicle and ran into the woods. She then was driven to another parking area beside a business park and was told to sit there until someone else arrived to pick her up. The armed man also told that they were watching from across the street and she should not leave. The York County Sheriff's Office was advised that the victim was located and responded to the scene. Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department investigators later determined that the victim's mother received a text message from an unknown number stating that her daughter had been taken for ransom and was being held at the dead end on Rocky River Road in Charlotte. It was believed that it was, this was in retaliation from a shooting that the victim's father was involved in. Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department investigators stated that the woman was taken from the area of Rocky River Road. This is still an active investigation by the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department and is following leads to apprehend all suspects involved. Lance Corporal Bunch went above and beyond to try and locate the kidnapped woman and bring her to safety. His dedication and duty serve reflects greatly upon himself and the agency as a whole. Please join me in congratulating Lance Corporal Bunch. Troop 5, uh, Trooper of the Year, be Lance Corporal A.J. Marshall, be Troop 5, Post C. Uh, Adam, if you would, come forward, please. <laughs> Lance Corporal Adam Marshall began his career with the South Carolina Highway Patrol in January 2015 and has been assigned to Troop 5, Post C, since September of 2019. He was previously stationed to Troop 1, Post C, Lexington. Lance Corporal Marshall currently serves as a field training officer and is a member of the Civil Emergency Response Team. He is a hardworking, dependable, and trustworthy trooper who displays a genuine concern for others. On the morning of August 29, 2021, Lance Corporal Marshall's compassion, quick thinking, and poise prevented a potentially tragic event from occurring. At approximately 0902 hours on that morning, Lance Corporal Marshall was patrolling in the Litchfield section of Georgetown County. He overheard a dispatch from the, uh, from the Georgetown Sheriff's Office involving a vehicle that had traveled off the roadway and into a pond. He was in the vicinity and immediately responded to that location. When Lance Corporal Marshall arrived on scene, two men witnesses said their driver was still inside the vehicle in the pond. Without hesitation, Lance Corporal Marshall notified Florence Telecommunications Center that he was entering the water and requested additional EMS units. Once in the pond, only the rear hatch of the vehicle was visible and Lance Corporal Marshall attempted to locate the driver by breaking into the rear window. He was unsuccessful in locating the driver initially. However, after several attempts with additional assistance from the Midway Fire and EMS personnel, the driver was located and safely removed from the submerged vehicle. Subsequently, the driver was transported to an area hospital for minor injuries and made a full recovery from the incident. The decisiveness and heroism displayed by Lance Corporal Marshall during this incident undoubtedly prevented a tragic outcome, embodied the essence of the selfless service of this agency and saved a life. 
please join me in congratulating Lance Corporal A.J. Marshall. Troop 6, uh, Trooper of the Year will be Trooper H.L. Green and Troop 6, Post A. Charleston Berkeley. Please come forward. <laughs> Trooper H.L. Green is an all-around professional and has shown his dedication to the Highway Patrol's mission of reducing fatal collisions through the commitment to his job. He has currently removed 45 impaired drivers from the roadway and has made in excess of 1,500 contacts through fair and, and proactive enforcement this year, 2021. Trooper Green is also a peer leader. He continues to be the go-to guy for his peers for his extensive knowledge of the SEDPS policy and procedure, as well as the South Carolina state laws. Trooper Green provides guidance and supervision in the absence of a supervisor. He showed not only his dedication to the job, but his attention to detail during a collision investigation on, on October 4th, 2021. Trooper Green was assigned to an abandoned vehicle collision on I-26 in Charleston County at approximately 0057 hours. Once he arrived, Trooper Green observed a Porsche SUV that appeared to have been involved in a collision, but the driver had fled the scene. Rather than simply towing the vehicle and completing the necessary paperwork, Trooper Green examined the vehicle and noticed the heavy front end damage consistent with a high-speed collision. But he did not see any evidence that the SUV had hit the wall in the area that he was located. He started to update dispatch and the supervisor that he had believed that the vehicle was involved in another collision at another location. Trooper Green then walked back from the location of the abandoned vehicle, looking on the shoulder and off the bridge in the area, subject to the gore, searching for signs of how the damage occurred to this SUV. After walking a great distance back from the SUV, Trooper Green saw that it, what appeared to be a vehicle upside down several hundred yards down an embankment and off the roadway. Trooper Green then ran to the vehicle and found that it was heavily damaged and two occupants were still inside, severely injured, but still alive. He began first aid measures and called the emergency services unit to the scene. Unfortunately, the driver of the victim's vehicle later passed away, but the passenger was treated at a nearby hospital and survived. Trooper Green did not give up on the investigation. He stayed out several hours past the end of his shift to make sure everything was done and done correctly. Even when, even when this was revealed, Trooper Green stayed until the suspect was located later the next day and he was arrested. If it were not for his heroic actions of Trooper Green that night, both the driver and passenger of the victim's vehicle would likely not have survived this collision. Thanks to his actions, the victim's families have some comfort in knowing that the person that caused this collision was arrested and will be held accountable. Please join me in congratulating Trooper Green. Trooper of the Year for Troop 7 uh, would be Trooper or TFC J.J. Richardson, Troop 7 Post B. Orangeburg. Please come forward. <laughs> TFC J.J. Richardson joined the agency on, uh, in 2018 and has worked his entire career in Troop 7 Post B. He has developed into an outstanding trooper who strives to better himself and others on a daily basis. He sets a standard for work ethic and professionalism within his post and Troop 7. During 2021, TFC Richardson was very proactive, especially during an unprecedented time in our society. His oath to serve the citizens of South Carolina never wavered, and it was evident that he was doing all he could do to ensure the safety of the motor in public. He exemplified service above self, making over 1,600 public contacts, investigating 257 collisions, with an emphasis 
on interdiction and impaired driving. Specifically, he shows a stake in ensuring the safe, safe community, making approximately 30 criminal drug charges and removing narcotics and weapons from the community in Orangeburg and Calhoun counties. In addition, he was a field training officer holding the responsibility of molding a newly graduated trooper trainee. Later in 2021, he assisted in escorting the South Carolina State University football team. TFC Richardson exemplifies the example of the agency's mission. Please join me in congratulating TFC Richardson. Troop 8 Trooper of the Year is Master Trooper J.L. Baldwin. Master Trooper Joy L. Baldwin has been with the South Carolina Highway Patrol for 22 years. He started his career with the Highway Patrol in Troop 2, Newberry County, before joining Troop 8 in October of 2017. Master Trooper Baldwin was assigned to the Safety Improvement Team with an emphasis on work zone enforcement, where he has been a great asset to the Safety Improvement Team and the South Carolina Highway Patrol. Master Trooper Baldwin always puts forth the Highway Patrol's core values of selfless service, integrity, and responsibility by placing his co-workers, the citizens of South Carolina, and the motoring and public above all. Master Trooper Baldwin is highly motivated and needs very little supervision. He is a certified taser, firearms, pit, and driving instructor through the South Carolina Criminal Justice Academy. Master Trooper Baldwin is always eager to assist when tasked with emergency work zone assignments with no objections and maintains good working relationships with SCDOT engineers and contractors, command staff, and co-workers. Master Trooper Baldwin is a true asset to the South Carolina Highway Patrol and a pillar in his community. He deserves this honor and recognition of his exceptional dedication to the South Carolina Highway Patrol and the citizens of South Carolina. Troop 8 proudly submits Master Trooper Baldwin's name for the 2021 Trooper of the Year. Master Trooper Baldwin is unable to be here today, so Captain Brad Hughes will accept the award for him. Troop 9 Trooper of the Year is Lance Corporal Nicholas R. Everhart. Please come forward. <laughs> on October 22, 2021, two pedestrians were struck on College Park Road in Berkeley County by a vehicle that left the scene, causing serious injuries to both pedestrians. Mate immediately responded to process the crime scene. Vehicle parts located at the scene later identified the suspect vehicle as a 2007 to 2012 Ford Escape or Mercury Mariner. Investigators have provided a possible suspect name of Jamie, who was reportedly a bartender at a pub near the area of the collision. Lance Corporal Everhart examined the pub's Facebook page, noting a specific Jamie was found to have liked many posts found on their page. This Jamie was also found to have created advertising posts to promote the same business. Lance Corporal Everhart searched DMV for Jamie and found out that she owned a 2010 Ford Escape, which was within the suspect vehicle range. Jamie was questioned by troopers at the pub and said her vehicle was parked at a residence not far from the collision scene. She refused to give a statement other than that she had hit a deer on I-26. Her vehicle was located at this residence, parked not in the driveway out front, but behind the home. Lance Corporal Everhart obtained phone records for the suspect and preliminary cell phone tower location slash sector mapping from the data showed that the suspect traveled from the area of the pub toward the collision scene. The phone records indicated she traveled down other roadways back to the pub after the collision. 
Their cell phone data, along with other evidence obtained during the investigation, resulted in the arrest of the suspect on two charges of leaving the scene of a collision resulting in great bodily injury. Lance Corporal Everhart thinks outside the box, keeps an open mind, and utilizes new to discover technology and data to assist in identifying drivers and vehicles involved in crimes. Lance Corporal Everhart has a commendable work ethic and routinely completes assignments in a timely manner. He continues to provide thoughtful and valuable contributions that result in proper collision reconstruction conclusions. Lance Corporal Everhart should be recognized for his hard work and contributions to MATE and the Highway Patrol. His team approach and work ethic mirror the core values of the South Carolina Highway Patrol. Everyone, please join me in congratulating Lance Corporal Everhart. Troop 10 Trooper of the Year is Master Trooper David Jones. Please come forward. The Officer Community, <laughs> the Office of Community Relations, Recruiting and Employment Unit's nomination for the 2021 Trooper of the Year is Master Trooper David Jones. On May the 26th, 2021, at approximately 5.15 p.m., Master Trooper David Jones had just sat down to work on his computer after completing his shift when he heard screams from next door. He immediately got up and ran next door where he met a child from the neighborhood screaming, Landon is dead. Master Trooper Jones ran to the back of his neighbor's house and saw his two-year-old, saw two-year-old Landon being retrieved by his mother from the pool where he was floating face down. Landon's mother handed him to Master Trooper Jones and he observed that Landon was blue in the face and unresponsive. Master Trooper Jones immediately turned Landon over onto his stomach and in his left arm and gave several back thrusts. He then turned him over and gave him several mouth-to-mouth -mouth breaths. He then turned Landon back over onto his stomach and gave several more back thrusts and again, several mouth-to-mouth -mouth breaths. At this point, Landon began to vomit large amounts of water and Master Trooper Jones responded by giving Landon additional back thrusts. Landon vomited several more times and eventually started breathing on his own. During this sequence of events, Landon's father, Andy, had called 911. Within approximately eight to 10 minutes, Lexington County deputies arrived, followed by EMS, who transported Landon to Prisma Health Children's Hospital in Columbia. As a result of the quick actions by Master Trooper Jones, Landon has made a full recovery and is doing very well. Two days before this incident, Master Trooper Jones had just completed his annual CPR course, which is provided to all South Carolina Highway Patrol troopers through the American Red Cross. He gives credit to this training that provided him the knowledge he needed to help save Landon's life. Everyone, please join me in congratulating Master Trooper Jones. No drum roll. <laughs> when I tell you, after hearing all and listening to those narratives, I mean, this is, all of these are great heroic acts that have been exemplified by each one of the troopers that have been identified here today. And any one of them, I mean, it, any one of them could be our Trooper of the Year for 2021. So uh, nobody here today will be uh, a, a loser, everybody will be the 2021 Trooper of the Year. 
uh, but we will identify one person, but as they, their heart and soul of the highway patrol for what you do each and every day and have an opportunity to help people in our communities and save lives the way you do. And this is so outstanding. So I'm sure you as a part of the audience sat here today and enjoyed listening to those narratives of, of how our troopers put their life on the line to help others. With that being said, and after all that was read by the uh, Lieutenant Colonels, the 2021 Trooper of the Year, as discussed among myself, the, the command staff, as we see it, is none other than South Carolina Highway Patrol Master Trooper David G. Jones. Please come forward. opportunity to speak so you know as a, a CRO we won't give that up uh, without <laughs> making comment but truly the CPR training is what saved the day I remember that afternoon and the emotions of that and, and being a father and seeing somebody as blue as Mark Gosnell's jacket and the fact that what this agency offered us is what saved his life. So I thank you for that. I, I encourage everybody. I preached the message ever since that day. If you have the opportunity to take it serious, because there was days that I sat through that class and may have looked at my phone or, you know, thought about something else. But I truly credit that class for saving a life. I witnessed it firsthand. So I encourage everybody, whether you wear this uniform or not, go through the CPR class, learn that first aid because truly it could save a life one day. Hey, I appreciate everybody. Thank Thanks. you, Dave. Hey, Dave. At this time, we would like to call the Executive Director of the Troop Association, Mark Garsnell and Douglas Korn, to come up and make a special presentation to our Troop of the Year. And I don't think I need the microphone, so we'll just move to the center of the stage. David, on behalf of the South Carolina Troopers Association and Cormac Arms, we'd like to present you with this Cormac Tactical AR-15 Patrol Pistol. And congratulations. Again, I would like to just say thank you. I appreciate your attendance here today. I appreciate everybody's participation. Uh, thank you again to all of our recipients uh, for what you've done throughout 2021. We look for a great continuation and, and narratives such as this 
uh, this time next year as we present our Trooper of the TCO of the Year for 2022. So again, thank you. I appreciate your attendance, and we try not to keep it too long. So as, as I close out with my remarks, if the director doesn't have anything, this time he says he doesn't at this time, we ask you to stand for our benediction, which will be given by uh, Chaplain David Tafau, and remain standing for the retiring of the colors by the South Carolina Highway Patrol Honor Guard. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Join me as we close in prayer. Father, once again, we thank you for this time that we've had together to recognize those who have gone above the call of their duty. Father, we ask a special blessing upon them and their families, and most of all, those who are out on the street right now enforcing the laws of this state. We pray your protection upon all of them. Go with everybody now as they um, go to their homes or their respective places. Keep them safe. We ask your blessings to be continued upon this great agency, and we'll thank you for it in your name. Amen. Amen. Retire the colors. Retire the colors.